Yeah, what up, what up? This is Sam Paul representing Alcatrax out of Adelaide, South Australia, and you're tuned into the Sunday sessions with my man Gunja Flex. What up? Sam Paul, um, an artist from Adelaide, obviously, uh, MC and producer, uh, also a radio host on Goombag Radio, and uh, yeah, I do a show called The Sample with Sam Paul, and yeah, we're kicking it live on uh, soundpond.net, so, um, yeah. Sunday sessions. I guess, uh, we'll go on a bit about the mixtape quickly, um, what's, uh, what's to be expected to uh, compare to your previous releases, man, like, uh, if you've done any mixtapes before that, um, what's... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I, I've done a couple of, um, I guess, albums, mixtapes type thing over the years um, under a, a different alias. Um, probably the most well-known one is one called The Outsider, which uh, I dropped yeah, right. in 2007. And um, I guess what can be expected uh, is um, a lot more fine-tuned beats. Um, yeah, yeah banging a bit harder than they used to and just sounding a bit more sweet and um, definitely much better rhymes and uh, you know wordplay and whatnot. Um, it's pretty average kind of styles back in the day but yeah, right, know, right. I think I've come a, come a long way as an artist in that respect so yeah, and yeah right. much more mature <laughs> I'm yeah. growing up no that's something I noticed man is the style was very like it's intelligible you know and it's and it's kind of unadulterated in the way you know you, it's it's yep. pretty pretty just straightforward and and like you can you can understand what you're saying, you know, and take something from it yeah. quite easily. Like, yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, that's a, that's actually something I've, I've always consciously tried to do. Um, yeah, right to, on, man. You know, to me, and I read this just recently on one of the hip hop pages that I follow on Facebook. But um, you know, they say you know, rapping is communication. You know. Yeah, word on it. So word, um, man, word. I would I'd rather you know speak in a simple kind of clear way that someone can understand what I'm saying than you know blow their mind away with some crazy wordplay and then leave going. What was that about? What did he even say? Yeah, yeah. What did he say? What was that about? I got no idea. No, I so think obviously, you know, I try to incorporate wordplay where I, as much as I can because that's, you know, a key element as well to, to rapping, but my focus is more on the message and what I've got to say. Um, and hopefully, you know, that'll connect with people listening. Yeah, oh man, no, I agree. And I think, like, a lot of uh, rappers kind of fall short in that regard or kind of uh, fall into that pitfall of of trying to fit more words in than meaning, yep, you know, yep. and then kind of, it's more killer, than, uh, more filler than it is killer, but yeah, well, yeah, I really dig your music, man, and, um, thank you, yeah, like, do you have any, like, collabs or anything on the album, any, any shout outs to any cats who've, um, who've got on there, at the moment, um, I'm trying to hook up a, a second collaboration, but I, I've got one at the moment with a guy from New York, goes by the name of, um, DJ250, um, yeah, right, Sweet. And despite the name, he actually raps as well as DJs. Yeah, um, right, right. He's he's worked with a few cats, um, like over in the states, relatively well known. I, I won't sort of um, n- go too name dropping, but um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, he's um, he's sort of you know on the, on the up and up over there, and he's he's doing his thing, doing mixtapes and and uh, gigs and whatnot uh, in New York, and um, just really you know doing some cool shit. Don't man. And um, yeah, I I, con- I got in touch with him through uh, Majestic Gage from DITC, who I'm um, oh, really? Facebook friend with like Far out. Um, yeah like I mean he, you know he, he replies to messages and comments it's pretty cool so I feel yeah, kind of you know right. like I'm talking to him like I'm talking to you now you know um, so he kind of like we got in touch by him and um, he asked me to send him some tracks because I think he does a radio show over there as well and um, so I sent him four tracks and he, he got back to me a couple of days later and said dude man let's do a track so um, I managed to find one on my album that was sort of still kind of could could you know feature someone if I if I wanted to so I um, I sent it over to him and he was down with it and um, yeah so right, definitely shout out to him and um, the, the other guy that I'm hoping uh, to get on the album, but if not, there's definitely a, be a track coming with me, um, is a guy who goes by the name of Sith, or Sick okay. in the Head. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Again, out of New York, and yeah, he's, he's got some pretty dope shit. He, he's done tracks with like DLTC Cats and things like that, so he's he's oh definitely no. kind of someone to watch out for. I think he even features on uh, the last Dialect and Despair album, um, right, yeah, Self yeah, Evident. Yeah. Cool, man. That's, yeah. that's right on, man. It's crazy how where Facebook allows us to link up like that. Yeah, word, man. I it, think it's... It's good like that. Um, you know, you just, it just it makes the world smaller. But it, the positive of that is that you get to, you can work with some dudes that are like you know others of the world. Yeah, man. Yeah, so. just do it in, within seconds. Like you know, link up, chuck yeah. the track over the net, and just yeah. Yeah, like exactly. That, man. Yeah, not the old days where you'd have to fly them over and, and <laughs> get a studio and yeah. you know put as a tape and. <laughs> It'd be you know, full and on, eh? Yeah, exactly. Like, 
someone in my shoes, I couldn't even imagine that. You know what I mean? Like, it seems kind of crazy just the uh, the effort that we would have had to go to compared to nowadays. Yeah, word, in man. In some ways, like uh, just just the accessibility of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, I think Facebook and the internet are like a wild beast. You know, if you get a good handle yeah. on it and direct it in the right way, it can be great. But if you let yeah. it get out of control, yeah, you know, all hell breaks loose. Yeah, definitely, so. man. That's it, man. And um, on, uh, I remember a little while ago you had this. Uh, what's the, can you tell us about the Alcatrax mixtape? Oh yeah. Um, basically, um, Alcatrax is sort of like a name that I, I've given to um, my kind of label. It's not. It's not a label in the true sense. It's just more, a, I guess, a co- uh, combined name for myself and a few mates that release yeah, stuff. Right. Um, the primary focus with that label has been the Alcatrax mixtapes, which we kicked off in 2010. We've had yeah, right. um, four, um, including 2010, we had 11, 12, and, and last year. Um, essentially, the idea is just to kind of give um, people like myself and, and other artists from around Australia, um, you know, a bit of a, a bit of promotion to get them out there. We try, you know, obviously try and promote as much as we can to. Um, draw as many new fans to those artists as we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've had some pretty good names on there. Um, some w- who are actually doing really good now. Like um, they were doing good then, of course, but yeah, you know, yeah. they just seem to have gone from strength to strength. Like dialect um, of dialect to despair. Yeah, uh, we've had NJE, who's now supporting Blissness, so we're in Sydney. Yeah, it's um, hard, um, hard. We've even had. Um, I he used to go by the name of um, the, uh, not the kid. Um, I know the kid from Adelaide, but there's a guy on there, I can't think of his name now, but he, he's actually signed to a beast for distribution now, but he's, yeah, right. he calls himself the, the Ruckman. Now. Okay. Cade, Cade MC. Cade, yeah. Um, he used cool. to call himself Cade, now he's yeah, known as the Ruckman, and he's actually signed to Obese. So, yeah, I guess, I mean, I'd like to think that maybe the mixtape had a little bit of a hand in that, you know, yeah, even, yeah. even if it was just them putting together a new track for the for the release and getting some cobwebs out so they can write some even better shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, and so. it, it kind of... Um, it's it's inspiring to see it happen, like see people uh, reach a point where they can they get signed, yeah. and and it's so close to home, you know. Most definitely, man. And, and uh, you know, and I, I know firsthand how difficult it is even just to get distribution. You know, like yeah, yeah. they want to know all these figures and sales and fan base and yeah, all this sort of shit. You know, like and um, it's just crazy. So to see them go to that, it's yeah, so inspiring. Oh, oath, man, oath, yeah. And yeah, definitely once when when you've worked with the people yourself and it kind of you know it, it definitely rub off a bit and say well, you know oh, maybe I'm you know it's sometimes it seems like it's a, a bit of a pipe dream almost yeah you know and definitely. it's like yeah you know what like if you put enough in and like really really yeah. do it yeah I'll, I'll be honest with you man though I mean anything that I get out of um, like doing hip hop now is a bonus when I first yeah, yeah. sort of started doing shit. All I wanted to do was just get a CD done, you mm, know, mm. or um, and, and get it out there and you know yeah, maybe yeah. sell a few copies, but probably give most of them away. And yeah, yeah. you know, I I think I made a demo back in about 2003, just a little four-track demo, and I was busting some tracks at a few open mic nights around the city and and down the yeah, coast yeah. and that. And I managed to sell about 80 or 90 copies. And this this is someone oh. who did, wasn't even known, man. But you get yeah, people yeah. caught up in the hype of yeah, seeing yeah. you know this live rapper in amongst a bunch of like acoustic guitarists. He really I really stood out and. Um, I guess that worked in my favour, you know. And yeah, yeah. I was just like, "Fuck yeah, this is." Co- Excuse me. Um, <laughs> this is, um, you know, really cool in that. Yeah, and, um, yeah. So yeah, kind of everything that I've done since then has been a bonus. You know, doing like full gigs and travelling into state and uh, featuring on mixtapes and and whatnot. You know, it's just all kind of, yeah, above and beyond what I ever wanted or expected to, yeah, yeah. to get. You know, so you know, it'd be great it's to sign to, to a label or you know get Triple J Play or you know those kind huh. of things. But as we were t- saying earlier, the internet. You know. I've get opportunities like today, you know, um, yeah, man, yeah. which you know are just as good as getting dri- Triple J or a Nova or anything like that. Yeah, you know, you're still reaching people that you're uh, outside of what you maybe do normally reach. So yeah, yeah, totally, man. Everything's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, no, and then it's, it's good to see people appreciate that. I, th- I always say just take any opportunity you can and yeah, just right. you know like because it's always it, if you don't, it's it's always an experience that you can yep. can gain from you know exactly. and take a lesson from and just. Yeah, and like even even just like you know inspire yourself from yep. even it might even just be, you might see some might be walking on the way somewhere yep. and you just see something you go, oh you know that's dope you know yeah just word inspire, man you know? yeah like I was in Melbourne in October last year did like a bit of a showcase for the album over there and um yeah, yeah. you know like it was a pretty cool show there was a lot of energy in the room and um you know a lot of very responsive crowd which is awesome but but probably the the biggest blessing I think I got was that um you know like walking around the city streets and stuff being different at Adelaide it just um, you know, inspired 
kind of ideas and lyrics and yeah, yeah. you know concepts for songs and you know it really um like I think I, I think I actually changed like half the album after yeah, being right. just because I, I just didn't realize that you know I could do more than what I had done yeah and, yeah um, yeah just want to keep pushing so like you said the experiences are a gold yeah I, no I totally agree dude so like when you started um, read between the rhymes what was the kind of vision you had behind it man what was the um, well I guess that it's kind of a bit of a play on um, on the concept of read between the lines um, but obviously you know yeah, read yeah. hip hop spin to it but yeah, yeah. ultimately the, the concept that, I, that I've had in mind is um, I guess looking beyond the surface of things and seeing yeah. the deeper meaning like yeah. um, I guess uh, the probably the most common for me to mention would be um, like hip hop Perception, uh, perception outside of the scene, like to people, it's just a, a music. But yeah. when you kind of dig deeper, you realise there's like the, the whole four elements, and you know yeah, there's a yeah. culture, that, there's a, a style of fashion, that you know Definitely, there's all these yeah. things that are much more than just the music. Um, you know, um, I get it even crosses over kind of into sort of some sort of conspiracy theory territory. You know, where we're mm. talking about how like the government taxes things like water, which yeah, yeah. Kind of fall from the sky. You, <laughs> know, and, you know, like it kind of kind of just pretty much yeah, looking be beneath the, the basics of what you can see. Or, or read and, and finding deeper meaning within yeah, that yeah. Um, in every aspect sort of, of life I guess yeah and just yeah no, and that kind of links in with what we were talking about before just taking experience yeah and just like yeah reading between lines and taking something from it exactly man yeah, yeah. <laughs> no that's right that's rad man I, I really like that yeah, that whole concept man. that's a word I haven't heard in a while right yeah, yeah. I love that word man yeah <laughs> fucking oath man <laughs> Yeah, no, oh, so we can swear. I just noticed yeah. you, kept, you kept saying oath, and I thought maybe you're not saying the, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. We can swear. We just yeah. can't <laughs> slander or nothing. We can't do any of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. oh, I, I try to. I mean, you may have noticed already with the songs, but I do tend to try and keep the the swearing to a minimum. To me, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like when you start f this and f that and all this all through your raps, then you're kind of like lacking, just I guess, the ability to to really express yourself. Clearly, yeah, I do yeah. acknowledge. You know, there's times when when a good cuss word just really hammers home a point. But yeah, yeah. for the most part, I, I think there's better ways to word things. For, Definitely, for me. So yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I'll take it from Eminem, like Will Smith. You know, you don't have to cuss in your rap or rap, raps yeah. to sell records. But no, definitely, I don't want to sell records if I have to cuss to, to do it. You know, I'd, I'd rather just express myself as myself. You know, I'm not a huge swearer. Yeah, especially yeah. Especially now, now I've got these two kids. You know, because they're like parrots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Especially the little one, man, he's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, like, I was going to ask, um, as a parent, did having children kind of affect the way you'd go about writing a rap? Like, um, I, th I guess you could say I started taking a lot more opportunities that maybe I didn't take before. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I drive a delivery truck for, for a living, and oh, yeah? so yeah. I um, started finding those times to, to rehearse or to write raps. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, just chuck on a, a disc on the, you know, truck or on my iPhone with headphones or whatever and yeah, yeah. and listen to beats or listen to music or whatever, whatever. Um, and so I started just, you know, finding any opportunity that I could to, to, to record, to, re to re rehearse yeah. and, and to write and produce yeah. and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Whereas before I was kind of a bit more kind of blasé, like, yeah, right. um, it's sort of like, oh, you know, I can get it done then, so I'll do it then instead of trying to squeeze every little bit yeah, of life yeah. out, of my, out of my day. So, yeah, it's def definitely changed my approach. Um, and it's also made me appreciate the time that I get to do stuff like when I'm recording like I yeah, don't yeah. fuck around like for a couple of hours trying to get a take I, yeah. I just kind of make sure I know my shit and go in there and nail it you know in, a, in an hour or two get all the takes done I need and, and that's yeah, it cool. before I, I could take five six hours on a track um, just you know because I didn't have to rush and yeah yeah um, you know things like that so. yeah I suppose you'd fill up your schedule a bit having Having two little tackers running around. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And, and my, <coughs> my wife and I, we work sort of piggyback of each other. Like, so I'll yeah, get yeah. home, take the reins, and then she'll get ready and go to work. So, kind yeah, of, right. you know, it's, there's not a lot of times that either of us don't have the kids and aren't mm. working. It's um, mm. a rare occasion. So, yeah, yeah it's definitely, you know, got to be more um, careful with the time you have. Yeah, yeah. So. No, totally, man. Yeah, all right. Um, oh. I'm impressed that you've got like a note, notepad there of like questions and whatnot. Cheers, man. Yeah, no, man. over the week I just kind of just sit around, you know, like yeah, just jot around a few questions and that. Just yeah, like um, I've got another one. Um, what's your like philosophy on hip hop? You know what I mean? Just being able to use it as something just to do, to okay. be able to vent, you know, or, like uh, express yourself. Like um, yeah, I guess you could say. Um, for me, I kind of consider it some. It's pretty a little bit of a cliche these days, yeah, yeah. but a bit of it like a therapy in, in yeah. a sense. You know, oh, I um, totally agree. 
uh, you know, there's a lot of stress in life. Um, you know, like at the moment we're moving house, and so you yeah, know, we're yeah. trying to juggle having kids and and having a life but with my wife and. Uh, working and all that, then trying yeah. to squeeze in this like house hunting and, oh, and yeah, flying, and, you know. Um, full and on. so, yeah, it's really full on. And so, I usually find you know, after a big day of doing stuff, a whole bunch of shit like that, I just, um, you know, it just I have to write, even if it's not necessary lyrics, um, I find just writing, yeah, um, you know, just um, jotting words, lines, phrases, just mm. anything pretty much that comes to mind. It's like right. a therapy, it kind of helps deal with everything. Um, and I guess also, like, I heard this thing on Facebook just recently, I think it's quite, like, kind of pertinent, and that's, um, this guy said that he, he would smile pretty much at everyone he walked past, and yeah, right. um, someone said to him one day, why do you smile at everyone? Sometimes yeah, people yeah. grunt at you, or they abuse you for, like, smiling like some creep, yeah. and he said, well, look, you know, there's so many people committing suicide, so many taking their own lives these days, that um, if my smile can change their day enough yeah, that yeah. maybe they change their mind, then it's, it was worth um, getting to grunting and abusing me mm, those few mm. times because there's a positive out of it, you know? Yeah, and, definitely. Um, and so I kind of, I, I take that kind of approach with music, you know, like, even if I need, if I write a song about a particular topic and it only reaches one person, but it, it helps them deal with that situation, you know, then it's, it's, it's work, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's like therapy for both people, for myself and also for, you know, people that dig it. Yeah, totally, man. No, that's... And that's a good way to look at it as well, man. It's just to it's to help yourself and to help others as well, yeah, you know. Exactly. Like and, and and like like you say, there is just plenty of stress in in life. Yeah, exactly. And you need a way because you get into trouble once you don't have a way to ha- to to, yeah, exactly. uh, to get exactly. it. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right, man. And you know, m- music in general, not just hip hop, but music in general is is a voice, you know, yeah. for people um, that don't have one. You know, like it, the blues back in the day was for people that you know. Mm. Were, you know, had shit going on, and you know, yeah, now hip hop's yeah. here for for us. And you know, it's um, yeah, it's it's for people that you know maybe didn't think they could do music. Sometimes you know that yeah, it yeah. gives them a, a way out. You know, they, you know, you, can, you don't need anything to get started. You could have a dude beatboxing, or you could just you know drop some rhymes a cappella because yeah, 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 the rhythm's ingrained in the way you flow it. That's um, it. So yeah, you, it's the yeah. percussive kind of aspect. Yeah, you know, something that you don't get with singing. Yeah. You know, or at least not most singing. You know, there are yeah. styles of singing out there like. That kind of scat stuff, which is kind of yeah. very similar to, to rap in that regard, but yeah. for the most part, yeah, no, like, yeah, it's a different kind of sp- more spaced out, I guess, the rhythm, yeah, and that, yeah, no, totally, man. Yeah. And I think, like, when you look at it that way, and you look at the cipher and what we do here at the Sunday session, it's just yeah. like a jam session, you know, yeah, what I mean, with musicians, but everyone's got their own, like, you're using words, but you know. Someone's, someone's words might take the shape, you know, take the shape of a drum kit, yep. and just it's a robust kind. It's carrying the groove. But someone else's words might take the course of a, it's of a like a clarinet or something that's just yep. kind of gracing its way over the beat. Yeah, no, definitely, and, man. And definitely. Yeah, like once you think of as an artist applying yourself in that way, like your voice and and your words, like it leaves a whole new space for progression yeah word and man just, and word. just like looking at you know the flow and, and the words as two different things and then and you know really dialing in on each of them exactly and then trying to yeah focus. yeah no that's right man it's like like you said a jam session but yeah, yeah. where you're not what you can do and stuff is not dictated by how much your guitar costs or how much your yeah, bass yeah. costs or, you know you, you're just using your voice and yeah totally man. um yeah no it's that's a very good analogy man cheers like man that one. <laughs> thanks man yeah yeah so um cool. i reckon what's the time what, where are we running this it's about 250 so we've got about ten ten minutes, and I get I guess we'll kick it into um, some tracks off the mixtape. Yeah, cool. Big cool. up for tuning in, James. You got any? Is it all right? We'll take this one real quick, man. I'll get a chord going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So taking over from what Bill was speaking, man. What's um? Why why still hip hop today? You know, as in yourself, like why why still why are you still doing hip hop? Um pretty broad question you know but is yeah, it no, for the love of the scene or like the um yeah no it's definitely you know i guess i love the, love the scene i love the culture um i love the fundamentals of what hip-hop is about even yeah though, yeah um you know i do go through times where i really do question it um in particular obviously the local scene here in, in australia um because sometimes it just seems over like you feel like you're getting overwhelmed with all, all this beef and, and yeah, um man. you know all this you know just I guess yeah, unnecessary unnecessary bullshit, you know, like and um 
Um, but you know, I guess I, I figure that you know, if I'm not there trying to push the, the, the posit, positive aspect, the unity and, and stuff, um, you know, then, you know, that's one less person pushing for the, the better, definitely, the greater good definitely. sort of thing, you know. So I want to sort of keep doing it as long as I can. Um, uh, I don't think I'll ever fall out of love with hip-hop, so that's not ever going to be an issue. But I guess the only thing that'll be an issue is that I may get to a point where I can't jump around on the stage anymore. Yeah, you know? like, yeah that's going to be so the factor, yeah, yeah. 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 Either I have to start rolling out in like a, a gopher or just, you know, maybe just... Um, <laughs> stick to producing or something like that but you know I've, I've got plenty of things in place and, and skills and stuff in there in areas of hip-hop that I I'll always have something I can do you know even if it's just you know running the mixtapes on Alcatraz yeah and, yeah um, you know putting my check, energy check, to that check. but but like uh, exactly like you were saying I think today's scene check, from you know when hip-hop came out and was all about getting out of struggle when like people yeah. expressing their like true feelings till now where hip-hop has become an industry yeah, you know it's exactly. not their culture anymore it's the the industry that people are trying to make yeah and exactly i think that's where we're at right now where you hear these oh you know f bitches and whatever yeah. and all this get money and all that yeah, and like yeah. like you say unless there's people positively pushing hip-hop yeah. into like a new direction well not new direction you know yeah. but you know what i mean of yeah. like the unity between kind of hip-hop, man. Keeping it on track, I guess, would like, be a good way to put Yeah, it. yeah. Like, we always have this chat with people. We don't understand why fights are happening at yeah, hip-hop at events, you know? Yeah, no, I, like, I, think, um, I think, to be fair, though, I think alcohol plays a big part in that. Definitely, cause, um, yeah, yeah, I very used to, true. I used to actually DJ at a club on Hindley Street um, playing, like, R&B and hip-hop. Admittedly, it was on CDs, but I, I didn't have a choice, but it was a good yeah, job, and it, it was a gig, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was getting paid to do it, and I, I loved doing it. But um, even in that kind of environment, you know, like, people get their drinks under the belt, and next thing, you know, um, you know, shit's breaking down. You know, like, um, so, yeah, it's, it's good just to kind of, like you said, be a be a part of tr trying to keep things on track and trying to, you know. And there's a lot of younger dudes coming up that don't understand where it came from. That some people definitely believe, not, yeah, definitely not. I couldn't believe reading somewhere totally. recently that someone actually thought like Hills of Poison and Bissonessa actually started hip hop. Like, you know, <laughs> wow, I know like, it's pretty exactly. humorous if you just yeah, no, no, that's yeah, serious. Yeah, like, that's but, like. But that's, you know, to yeah. me shows some real issues with the education part of hip-hop, you Definitely. know, like, knowledge is, is just as much a part of knowledge it. Is it is the power, it is knowledge man. is because the power. Because the hip is to be hip with the note, to be hip with the times. Exactly. And the hops, the action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hop, that's yeah. it. That's what KRS-1 says. KRS, blast master. Yeah, yeah. But um, if I could just, just on that positive tip and people pushing that message, if I could just do a quick shout out to a few people. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, man. Definitely, definitely um, like my man Hal from uh, Coolism, uh, NJE from Sydney, um, yeah, L Fresh Lion, and, uh, and uh, people like that really pushing the positive vibe, positive hip hop, um, you know, yeah. uh, keeping the messages out there and, and helping to educate the, um, the up and coming sort of crew so that, you know, they're aware of where hip hop came from. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Totally, and to totally. anyone who's, um, who's a part of or or, you know, is respectful of the Zulu nation, you know? That's Definitely, but I'm bad at keeping it. But it's like, right like on, you say, right I think it is that there is a change coming in hip hop. Like, yeah. I know when I speak to people about, they say, oh, so what are you doing? Like, oh, I'm an Aussie hip hop artist. Yep. Automatically, I get that look of like, Aussie hip hop, what? So you slander and you, you swear and you say nonsense. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. You need to understand, like, hip hop, it's not like that, you know? Yep. It is that community unity yeah. feel. Mm. But it is. It's a. It's it's definitely rising though. Like you said, there's yep. more cats every day are coming out with that positive influence because they've seen what's happened with the exactly. the money ruled yeah, industry. Exactly. I mean, I'd even um, go so far as to you know give him props to people like Cursor. Like I know a lot of people diss yeah, on him because of some of the content of what he's saying. But if you think about it, you know that's that's what where it started. That's hip hop. You know, yeah, ghetto, yeah. You know, but look what he's doing now. You know, his his music's becoming a lot more polished, a lot more. You know, I think a lot more positive in in the sense that he's speaking on some pretty important topics yeah. in our society and yeah, yeah. and like truthful to him you know yeah, truthful exactly, to him you know and, and he's you know he's still only a fellow young cat really when you think about it and um, that stuff he was doing was reflective of where he was at in life then you yeah, know yeah. I'm not a big fan of his music I won't I won't lie but you know I've got mad respect for dudes like that that just do it and um, you know like he's had practically no promotion no radio play none of that shit but he's still one of the most well known rappers in Australia yeah, you know yeah. whether you love him or hate him you can't knock nah, definitely definitely that yeah, and yeah. that's that's what in the last like two and a half years yeah um, 
mainstream, I guess. Yeah. He's been doing his thing for a while, but exactly. the last two and a half years, you know, Cursor, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Cursor, of course, you know. Yeah, yeah. How could you not know him sort of thing? I mean, you yeah, know, yeah. He's, he's even made such an impact that, um, like, 360, um, no disrespect to 60, but, like, he even came out dissing Cursor to try and yeah, get a bit right. of hype for his new album, you know, like, he did a diss track just out of the blue for no reason other than that probably just to promote and get his name back on yeah, the, yeah. in your mouth. Um, you know, he's obviously, you know, felt that was the right person to go to to try and get that, you know, notoriety back for his music, you know, but yeah, that's, that's it, all man. marketing. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the kind of sh business tactics that people use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try yeah. and, you know, like uh, create some attention yeah, by, exactly. you know, uh, hating on someone or yeah, like, you know, like and, and it seems to work. It's yeah, kind of yeah. sad to see that it what does people can't see through the the kind of gimmick uh, a lot of people yeah. rely on in their music. Well, life. I think it's also to do with like how business orientated hip hop's become. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not as uh, it's not as free flowing as it used to be. Now, when you're in a sense, you know, yeah, but now when you you create a thing, the idea people have yeah. is like. Okay, so once I got this, how am I going to market it? How am yeah. I going to sell it? Whereas back in the day, it was, I'm going to make this, and then yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. That, that's it. How like, you feel. That it's not about how am I going to get this business yeah. deal and this yeah, major, yeah. Exactly. you know, and it's distracted a lot of people from exactly. just being themselves and just yeah, exactly. doing hip-hop because, yeah. you you know, you are hip-hop. Like. Yeah, that's it, man. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys have read it, but I, I read the um, Jay-Z book, Decoded, and um, mm. pretty much he kind of was exposed to hip-hop in the early days. He was a drug dealer, as, as most people would know, back in the day. And, um, you know, he just basically hustled hard. Like, he turned his hu uh, hustle skills from drugs to, to music. Yeah, and yeah. And just pushed it. And now look at him. He's, you know, um, again, love him or hate him, he's still one of the most successful, commercially successful rappers, but at the same time still bringing the skills. Like, you know, I yeah, guess yeah. That's, that's a debatable topic for another day. But I, I personally have a lot of respect for Jay-Z and, and Definitely. what he does. And... Um, I don't buy into that. There's an attitude going out there with that Magna Carta that didn't reach a lot of his old fans because he's talking about you know all this money and wealth and that that he's got. But I can sort of personally still see relation because it's sort of like well, it's not about yeah, yeah. the money that he's talking about. It's about the fact that he's got there. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. he's at now. You know, yeah, yeah. Macy and I think if if he was where he's at now and he was still rapping about living on the corner, seven, yeah. It, it would be that would be fake you exactly know? and that's exactly. like not what he's doing that's exactly, the complete man. opposite of what he's yeah, doing that's right that's right so yeah oh yeah man well, you got All any right. uh, last shout outs you want to give out before we get into some uh, some live performances a bit later on um yeah uh, I guess um, I mean, you mentioned a few earlier yeah um yeah I'll give a shout out to my man uh, Nikolai Agel um, Syntax yeah, yeah, the Sadist yeah. Um, to you guys for having me on here. Yeah, big ups. <laughs> big ups <laughs> for that one. Sound, soundpond, uh, .net. Um, all the Goonbag family, Uncle Nevs, Mass MC, um, my man Reason, Pegs. Uh, yeah, and anyone just doing it, man. Like uh, I could, I've got yeah, so many names I could say, but would be if the rest of the show just trying to remember them all. But it just anyone that I um, that I've worked with, that I talk to, that you know, that supports what I do. Um, or is that doing? They're doing it themselves, man. You know, just you know, shout out to everyone, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, everyone yeah, in the yeah. chat room right now, we will throw up all the sample links to get some more music, yeah. drop some more info about the goon bags. So, uh, yeah. stay tuned. I think Gunja Flex is gonna spin you a nice little track, and then we're gonna get into some funky stuff. So, stay tuned. Peace. Yeah.